All right, good morning, folks. Today is February 15th, 2020. 20, February 15th, 2023, off to a slick start already. It is Wednesday, which means only one thing Daft Punk, me, you, Tom Bishop, Stephen H., Carrie, Stormwalking. We're going around the world, but first. Let me introduce those who may not be familiar with what we're doing here. Welcome to episode number 304 of Simply Cyber's Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. I'm your host, Dr. Gerald Dozier, and over the next 45 minutes, me, you, Jenny Housley, Brian White, Leonardo down in the DR, Andrew Nakamura, Tony Roy, Shane Himes are going to be going through the top cybersecurity news stories of the day. And I'll be giving my expert analysis and opinion on each of those stories on what it means to you as a practitioner or if you're looking to break in the industry, how you can use that information to better yourself as a candidate, wow interviewers, and just give yourself a better appreciation for what is going on in our industry. Now, before we dig into all that hotness, including Worldwide Wednesday, I'd love to share the stream sponsors with you. Shout out and thanks to Barricade Cyber Solutions. Barricade Cyber Solutions is dedicated to helping businesses from cyber attacks and recover from the damage done. Cyber attacks can cause massive issues for businesses and send dedicated, hardworking business owners into turmoil. But Barricade Cyber Solutions knows how to mitigate the damage done by cyber incidents. Check them out at barricadecyber.com. Links in the description below. I'm on the website right now if you're with us on stream. You can see you scroll down Eric Taylor's calendar. You Just two clicks and you got a 10 a.m. appointment with him today or whatever time works best for you. Set up a call with the guy. 30 minutes of your time could save you hours and tens of thousands of dollars down the road. It's 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 like no brainer on on return on your own investment. Oh my god, this coffee is so good. I also want to say shout out and thanks. And we'll do a little bit more of this in a second to uh, IT Pro uh, by ACI Learning, formerly IT Pro TV. Same same platform, just a different name. No big deal. Um, if you're interested in getting, you know, content, uh, cybersecurity education content, IT content, audit content, uh, certification training, practice exams, labs, check out IT Pro TV. Uh, links in the description below. I'm actually going to post a, a, a pin a comment here in a second, but definitely uh, check them out. Each episode of the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing is worth half a CPU recall, so be sure to say hi in chat and do document that you're here hashtag team live if you're live with us i see a hundred what 69 74 people oh boy we got we got our work cut out for us today chat <laughs> with going around the world but we're, we'll do it we'll do it i guarantee you all right also if you're live love it thanks so much for being here hashtag team live and chat but don't worry about that because you're going to be telling me where you are and just a minute here if you're watching on replay thanks for catching the stream hashtag team replay i know this time slot isn't easy for everybody in the world but many of you do make it at least on the replay i genuinely appreciate that and also as i mentioned before hashtag passive observer formerly known as lurker if you're if you're a regular of the show but you've never said hi i see you hello it's it's i want you to be comfortable it's not about saying hi or anything like that be comfortable hashtag passive observers we see you you're always welcome here no matter what okay now it's that time it's that time people my favorite favorite segment of the week we're going to start with romania hold on one second if you're new here every wednesday we go around the world the worldwide wednesday is presented by it pro tv now it pro from aci learning the international boom international online training solution that professionals in audit cybersecurity and it turn to for binge worthy comment content use promo code simply cyber 30 to get 30 percent off your first month or first year i got the coupon code right there on the screen and i pinned a comment in chat if you're on youtube that can quick link you to there okay here we go all right you might have to repeat yourself you might have to repeat yourself. I haven't been watching, okay? I'm going to set the clock for two minutes. Let me know where you're from. Let's go around the world, people. All 
All right, USA online. Texas, what's up, big Texas? Good to see you. I saw Romania. All right, Detroit. Detroit Rock City's in the house. North Carolina up here, Upper Peninsula. Yes, Columbia's in the house. Boom, thank you, South America. DR in the house. My man, Leonardo's bringing the heat. Netherlands. Oh, yeah, I'm feeling it today, guys. Scotland and Serbia's in the house. We'll do UK because I don't have... Uh, uh... All right, I'm sorry, Serbia. We're going to give you Slovenia today. I can't, I can't get... I can't get to Serbia. Canada, InfoSec Kid bringing the heat. Pakistan, thank you, Pakistan. Yeah, baby. Where we at? Cali's in the house. Miami's in the house. Where the players play, Kimberly. KC's in the house. I love it. Where's our Botswana? Where's our South Africa? Where's our internal strangers? India's in the house, representing. Pakistan still online. I love it. Bring the heat. Where we at? Where we at? We got 49 seconds, guys. Ontario, Canada, love it. Netherlands, already online, got you. Liechtenstein, oh my gosh, where is that? I don't know that one. Holy crap. I'm gonna need some help on that one, y'all. Liechtenstein? I mean, I try to be a little bit cultured. Oh, there's Serbia. I try to be cultured, but damn. Italy, the boot. Love it. Come on now, where we at, where we at, guys? 23 seconds, Lagos, Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you, Io, for bringing Africa online. Where's Internal Stranger? Where's our Australian contingent? No! 10 seconds. 10 seconds. <laughs> Where's our Pacific Rim, folks? Oh, brutal. All right. Well, good times, everybody. Good times. It looks like we did not successfully do it today. I'll still give us a, a, a the sounder for getting... Six sevenths of the continents of the world. Nice job, everybody. Congratulations. Well, well done. Uh, looks like we just missed out on Australia area. Uh, low countries up in here. South, South Carolina. Do love me some South Carolina. France, Switzerland. You know, just, just for cleaning up the, just for cleaning up. We'll, we'll drop, we'll drop these. Where is Switzerland? There it is. Ooh. All right. Yeah. All right. So good job, everybody. Congratulations. Uh, let's come back next Wednesday for Worldwide Wednesday, and we will see if we can get we can get it next week as well. All right. But for now, sit back, relax, and let's let the cool tones of CISO Series Cybersecurity Podcast wash over us with an awesome wave. Get your coffee. Settle in. I'll see you guys at the mid roll. February 15th, 2023. Oh, hold on. I had to listen at 2x speed because they didn't post the blog post this morning. Super annoying. From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. It's Wednesday, February 15th, 2023. Hackers breached Pepsi Bottling Network. Pepsi Bottling Ventures has disclosed a breach of its network in an email sent to consumers this past Friday. On January 10th, the company discovered that info-stealing malware had been deployed to its network back in December of last year. Pepsi Bottling confirmed that a threat actor accessed systems and downloaded information belonging to former and current employees, including names, home and email addresses, financial account information, government IDs, digital signatures, benefits, and medical information. AI has... Okay, so Pepsi Bottling, uh, you know... Uh, the. If you guys, just to age myself, back in the day, the 90s, right? Pepsi versus Coke, the Cola Wars. I'm um, getting a little nostalgic watching this uh, Pepsi Where's My Jet uh, documentary on Netflix. Uh, but Pepsi, Pepsi's a big, big boy brand. Uh, they own tons of product, just like Coke owns tons of product. Um, so anyways, they suffered a breach. Now, a couple of things um, to point out here. One, Pepsi is like a... You know, I, I don't know this definitively, but I would bet money that matters to me that it's true. Pepsi's a Fortune 500 company, right? Big conglomerate, uh, lots of money, lots of tech. At the end of the day, it is, they're making soda, but it's, you know, it's a business. They make a product, it's manufacturing. Whether they're making widgets, baubles, or cans of soda, it's just manufacturing. 
and they have technology. Now, it says that they were breached in some way and systems were accessed. So this has nothing to do with OT. Um, it looks like based on preliminary investigation and unknown party access to those systems, installed malware. So it sounds like maybe they got remote access. Um, some donkey probably had remote access turned on or misconfigured something or, or, or an infected machine got brought into the network. By the way, this could have happened not by Pepsi people, right? This could have happened by like a third party vendor, a sales guy, a guest, um, a VIP, whatever. The malware got on. At that point, it reaches out over port 443. So it just rides the encrypted uh, web wave of traffic and out to a C2 node. And then at that point, they pushed post exploitation payloads down to it and did data exfil. This is a textbook cyber kill chain okay so first of all if you want to know cyber kill chain that like this go if you've never heard of the cyber kill chain you should you should know about it so what i would recommend you do is google cyber kill chain after the show go to the images tab look at a million different versions of the cyber kill chain then go back and read this story and you'll see that it maps perfectly now one thing that i do want to point out that is kind of laughable and uh, any gray beards in here, and when I say gray beards, I'm not excluding women. It's just it's just a term, right? So like any gray hairs, right? So if you're a lady and you have like, you know, strands of gray, right? Just just to indicate experience in the field, not not like age or whatever. What's really interesting is the story says right here, and I can't highlight in the story, but it's interesting. It says, what is most concerning about this incident is the long time gap between attack and detection. Essentially, criminals had almost three weeks of accessing the data without anyone knowing it was compromised. Three weeks, bro? Dude, like uh, uh, like Athena Health was breached for like 18 months. Dude, our time to detection used to be measured in years. It was horrible, right? If you could get it down to months, you were considered like, bro, you should give a black hat talk on that. That's sick. How are you detecting? Now... Now, three weeks, and we're calling that we're calling that a concern. Like, yeah, I, I want to detect immediately, but the reason that time to detect has gone down so dramatically over the last five years is because ransomware is getting lumped into the statistics. In ransomware, the threat actor tells you you're compromised. You don't need to detect it. The threat actor is on your detection team. They're like, bro, here's a ransom note. Are you kidding me? So the the time to detect is an actual good metric to track for efficacy of your information security program. Seeing three weeks is the most concerning uh, gives me pause because that's crazy. That's I mean three weeks sucks, but but in reality, I'll take it. Successfully piloted an F-16 fighter jet. The U.S. DOD's research agency, DARPA, announced that they've successfully completed several AI-controlled flights of their F-16 test aircraft at Edwards Air Force Base in California. DARPA said it doesn't expect the plane to fly without a pilot, but the AI will control the jet and provide flight data while the, quote, human pilot focuses on larger battle management tasks in the cockpit, end quote. Back in 2018, the government committed to a five-year, $2 billion AI spending plan. DARPA said that AI-powered L-39s will participate in a live dogfight above Lake Ontario in 2024. Oh, okay. So a couple things here. I do like Vice. I don't know if you guys... I don't know if Vice is considered a polarizing news outlet or not, because they do, they do kind of... I don't know. But Motherboard... Motherboard by Vice. I, like, subscribe to the newsletter and stuff. I like their stuff, okay? It's a little edgy. But it's not sensationalized, and it definitely doesn't feel like propaganda. Okay, so first of all, here we go. Shall we play a game? All right. What's up, Hillary P? Good to see you, Nightshade. All right. So, guys, first of all, I find it ridiculous that they mentioned that autonomous airplanes aren't unheard of. The first successful one was in 1914 when a guy put a gyroscope on a tail of a wing of a plane. Okay, stop, stop, stop with that. That's not what we're talking about. So don't even muddy the waters with that. Next. I'm not super concerned about this, guys. Okay, I know it sounds like doom and gloom. And like, basically, this is Skynet, Skynet's Air Force at this point. But um, AI, 
if you want to call it that, I feel like this is like under air quotes, AI. Computers have been assisting pilots for decades, right? Do you, do you, like, honestly, guys, do you think the freaking space shuttle is, like, piloted by stick? You know what I mean? Yeah, I get the, the, the movie with, like, Tommy Lee Jones and Clint Eastwood and um, whatever, where they're like, we're just going to stick fly the space shuttle. No, come on, man. There's a ton going on in a space shuttle. It has been controlled mainly by computers, and only in Apollo 13... When the thing got all jacked up, did Tom Hanks have to like one eye it out the window and and like stick fly it? Did, like compute like let's be real, man. Computers have been helping fly since the '60s. Okay, so I'm not super worried about this. Also, there always is going to be a pilot in there. Here's the thing: in all reality, these planes cost tens of millions of dollars each to make. Tens of millions of dollars each to make. A human. Requires time to think, make a decision, right? Yes, I get that they understand attack strategies and, you know, like I saw Top Gun too, like the inverted flight and, you know, international relations and all that crap. Yeah, okay. But you know what? If a pilot's flying and he sneezes and he pushes the stick down and he nosedives into a, into a hill, pilot's dead, sorry. J jets ruined $10, $20 million there because of a sneeze, right? So like I'm being a little... Um, like playfully humorous here. I'm being a little hyperbolic, but my point is, this is interesting. But you know, they're not. They're not gonna. They're not. They're not given an AI F-16 squadron. Okay. I do want to point out, though, it is worth noting that I have seen tech, and I showed. I I, I shared it with some folks earlier. Of um. Like drones, drones that have basically like munitions attached to them that you like throw up and you kind of like, you tell it where the bad guys are and it goes and takes care of it. Um, that's a little scary. I feel like, I feel like mini drones, AI equipped mini drones that go eliminate targets are far more likely to be mainstream than AI fighter jets. Okay. That's what I think. But still. Shall we play a Hyundai and Kia to update anti-theft software on millions of vehicles. Hyundai and its subsidiary Kia are now offering free software updates for their cars in response to a rash of car thefts after the so-called Kia Challenge went viral on TikTok. Thieves known as the Kia Boys posted instructional videos showing how to bypass the vehicle's security system using simple tools like USB cables. The security update will activate an ignition kill feature to effectively neutralize the now popularized theft techniques. The car manufacturers are offering the software upgrade free of charge for a total of 8.3 million eligible cars. Previously, Hyundai was charging car owners $170 for the software upgrade in addition to any labor costs to install it. Okay, a couple, couple things going on here. What the hell is wrong with people? What? TikTok video gone viral. This is how you commit Grand Theft Auto. Like, I get it. I get it. Grand Theft Auto 3 was a fun game. Vice City is like some MMORPG that's crazy cool. You are committing grand larceny, a massive felony. I don't care if it's a Kia or Hyundai or Mercedes or, a, you know, or Heath's Lambo. Try to, try to get Heath's Lambo in here every single episode. Um, it's, it's a freaking felony, man. Like, Ooh, Kia challenge. Look at me. I stole a Kia with a USB. Oh, look at me. I've ruined the rest of my life. Won't be able to vote. Won't be able to get student loans. Won't be able to fix my situation. But I was viral on TikTok for 15 minutes. Yes. Okay. So this is gross. Second of all, shame on Kia and Hyundai where they were going to charge, like, I'm going to try to approach this from two different ways. Kia and Hyundai originally were going to charge car owners $179. Or, hold on. It doesn't say it in the story, but the guy said it on the podcast. They were going to charge owners of these cars something like less than 200 bucks, but more than $100 to have them fix the vulnerability that these Kia boys were um, abusing or exploiting right? 
That is wrong. Can you imagine for a moment, right, that Cisco, like a massive vulnerability comes out from Microsoft Windows, right? Massive vulnerability. Proxy, proxy shell comes out. And Microsoft's like, holy crap, there's a massive vulnerability for Microsoft on-prem exchange. You need to patch immediately. Great cash, homie. That will be $140 per on-prem exchange instance. Check, you know, click here to add to your cart and check out now. People would be out of their freaking mind. People would be out of their mind. It would be the top story of the day. And Kia and Hyundai, I, I get it. They're, they're a business and they're like, oh, so we're going to have to take a technician off of doing paid work in order to have them fix this bug over here. Uh, let's charge for it. It's greedy. It's short-sighted. It's terrible for customer, um, uh, um, customer um, loyalty. They're idiots. They're completely idiots. I don't know who was in charge of that decision, but they should be evaluated for their performance at the end of the year around that decision. So anyways, Kia and Hyundai are doing it now. If you own a Kia or a Hyundai, or your end users own a Kia or a Hyundai, and they don't watch TikTok, you may want to make them aware that this is out there and available. It looks like uh, it's 2017, 20 Elantras, Sonatas, and Venues. The update includes an anti-theft sticker, a longer alarm, the need for a physical key. Okay, the need for a physical key, that's actually anti-theft. An anti-theft sticker? Dude, they're already committing to commit, they're already agreeing to commit a felony. You think a sticker is gonna do anything for you, <laughs> bro? Come on with that. Anti-theft sticker. Fashion. Jesus. Russian businessman found guilty of insider trading scheme. On Tuesday, Vladislav Klyushin, a 42-year-old Russian millionaire with ties to Vladimir Putin, was found guilty on charges of wire and securities fraud in a Boston federal court. Klyushin participated in a scheme where he and other cyber criminals hacked into vendor computer systems and obtained financial disclosures for hundreds of companies, including Microsoft, Tesla, Kohl's, Ulta Beauty, and Skechers before they were filed with the SEC. Klyushin personally used the information to cheat the stock market, turning a $2 million investment into nearly $21 million. Altogether, the group raised a total of about $90 million. And now... Okay. Dude, this guy, talk about balling. Holy crap. Holy crap. Do we have like a balling sound effect? What would be, what would be appropriate for that? Well, first of all, All right, so this guy's getting his, but I, I really want to, dude, check this out, man. He was arrested in Switzerland after he arrived on a private jet, but before he got on his private helicopter to go to a ski resort. Dude, this guy was walking around like a tripod in Switzerland and all of a sudden got arrested. Like, good. I'm glad that you're being held accountable. Now, what I do want to um, what I do want to um, share with you guys really quickly is that Ransomware reigns supreme, okay? But this crime right here is legit, and it's more espionage if that's a word, espionage Essentially, this dude's IT company was basically uh, a front for a hacker, a hacker group, excuse me. And they would just hack into companies and steal their um, filings before they went public. If you've ever seen the movie... Um, Trading places, classic. Again, I'm wicked aging myself here, but apparently, like, uh, like, um, retro is in right now, right? Obviously, I love retro synthwave, but with with the kids, with the kids, with the kids, um, retro's in. So maybe trading places with Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy will make a comeback. But that movie's classic. But essentially, the gist of it was, um, that they could swap someone who knew everything about uh, stock trading with someone who knew nothing about stock trading and get the same performance out of them because they had access to inside information. Oh, no, no, no I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. The way that I don't want to ruin anything, but basically they got access to early reports of orange juice numbers or orange orchards or whatever, and it had a massive impact on the performance of the stock. So if you know... Like basically, if you know ahead of time that something's gonna go down, 
You can short it. If you know it's going to go up, you can buy a ton of it before it goes up, right? It's, it, it is basic, basic insider trading. That's all it is. That's all it is. Um, another throwback number. Uh, was it Wall Street with Gordon Gecko? He was doing massive amounts of insider trading. It's not fair. That's why it's illegal. It's illegal because somebody in a free market, free market, you're supposed to have, everybody's supposed to have access to the same information. In a free market, you can't have insider trading because it means somebody has a market advantage and it's not fair, right? And if the entire market is deemed not fair, then the people, like the market won't exist because people won't use it because it's not fair, right? And then the market collapses and then you have, um, you know, recession, recession, uh, depression, those things. Oh, so good coffee. All right, Harish. Yeah, kind of like the big... No, the big short's a little different. The big short was a great movie. I love Christian Mayle, uh, the actor, but um, no, big short was different. Big short was more about how <laughs> um, comp like investment banks and mortgage uh, mortgages were being bundled in into packages. So it was like trash mortgages, but you couldn't see that they were trash mortgages because they were bundled into these like equity packages and then being sold by investment banks. It's watch the movie, but basically people didn't realize that they were buying hot trash. It was it was like it was like sticking a um it was like taking a heater into a into a, a Christmas present a box, right? And then wrapping it up with a nice bow. And then you're like, here you go. <laughs> Here's a bucket of crap. <laughs> but it looks good with a ribbon, right? Oh, I'm silly today. Hold on. A word from our sponsor, Mercy! us. Yes, the CISO series. Active listener David Cross, senior vice president and CISO of Oracle SaaS Cloud said, quote, I value cybersecurity headlines early every morning as it provides me advance notice of what I might need to explore first thing at the start of the day, end quote. Sponsors of cybersecurity headlines get the ears and eyes of security leaders and practitioners. Sponsorship includes the podcast, our blog, and our daily newsletter. Cybersecurity Headlines reaches listeners who want to quickly consume daily cyber news in whatever format they choose. To learn more about becoming a sponsor, email us at info at CISOseries.com. You know what I might do? I might email CISO Series and ask them how much it's to sponsor for a week. Simply Cyber could be the sponsor for the week. We could, we could get a whole roll. I, let me see how much that costs. That could be fun. And maybe we could grow our community. I don't know how many other people listen to cyber headlines, but it'd be cool. All right. All right. Let's do this. Mid-roll. Hey, 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 hey. All right, guys. We're at the mid-roll. So if you're new here, every day, midway through the show, we take a minute, we take a pause and say thank you. I say thank you to the sponsors, Barricade Cyber Solutions and ACI Learning. I say thank you to you, Harish, Duke Norris, Justin Gold, Cybersecurity Central, Jim Wales, squad members, new people who are here for the first time. Thank you for checking us out. Thanks for being here. Longtime passive observers, thank you for always lurking. Genuinely appreciate all of you guys. We are the Simply Cyber community. If you're getting educational value out of this, if you're getting entertainment value out of this, if you're getting any value out of this, go ahead and hit the like button for a hot second. It goes a long way to saying thank you to me and it helps other people find the show. Yes, hit the bell for notifications too if that's your jam. I typically don't ask people to hit the bell for notifications because I feel like that's a personal choice, not one that I'm going to impose upon you. What's up, Emilio Garcia? Good to see you. Oh, BSEC. Yes, thank you to the mods, Justin Gold, Joel Belt, and BSEC, Base Case. Stefan, although he, he's always busy doing other stuff. So many others, thank you all. All right, if you are not familiar with the newsletter, come check out the newsletter, simplycyber.io newsletter. Uh, I, I write it every weekend, and uh, it's three pieces of actionable intel. Your, your Kia Boys challenge might be in there, next Monday, and I provide you guidance on exactly how you can communicate to your end users, to your executives, and to your peers on something of value, something cyber risk reducing. I do want to remind everybody that immediately following the stream today at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, 
right here at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We will be going live with a premiere. So this is a produced video. I'll be in chat. Many of you will be in chat. Oh, Dreon, thank you so much, my friend. Yep. Hit the wrong, hit the wrong sounder there. Thank you, Dreon, for the 35 uh, South African, I think it's South African dollars. Genuinely appreciate that. IT at 40 plus, welcome to the squad. Yes, don't you forget about me, that's right. So guys, Accountant to Cyber, this is part of the Roll to Cyber series I've been doing. You can see I've got heavy equipment operator, mechanic, pharmacist, religious leader, retail, paramedic, stay-at-home parent, hospitality, food and bev. Today's an accountant, and this guy is really well known in the industry. Drives a Lamborghini. <laughs> Spoiler. Come come stay with us after the stream and check it out. Uh, and then tomorrow we've got these streams. Also, uh, Zach Hill. So there's been some some um, shuffling around with the Simply Cyber Live. So uh, Zach Hill will be my guest tomorrow talking about career services. Uh, but let us slide back into the uh, news really quickly. As soon as we get our hey, 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 hey. Let's get some hey, hey, hey's in chat, y'all, and then we'll get into the news or get back to the news. Here we go. Or oh, la, 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 la's. La 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 la, la 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 la. All right, guys, let's slide back into the news. Mortal Kombat ransomware found punching targets worldwide. Researchers from Cisco's Talus security team said that over the past month, they've observed a threat actor deploying Mortal Kombat ransomware. The researchers say that Mortal Kombat is novel ransomware, and based on its name and the wallpaper it drops, the malware is definitely linked to the popular video game and movie franchise. Most of the victims are in the U.S., while a smaller percentage come from the U.K., Turkey, and the Philippines. Though little is known about the threat actors, they are scanning for organizations who leave remote desktop protocols exposed to the Internet. All right. I've been waiting. I feel like I've been waiting for this story my whole life. <laughs> I got two Mortal Kombat sounders on the board and an emote in chat and uh, been waiting, been waiting for this one, been waiting for this one. Okay, so a couple of things. One, um, you know, okay, so just based on this, based on this, ready? Based on this story, here, here's my, here's my tinfoil hats, okay? This threat actor is a couple guys, okay, not, not a, not a, criminal gang okay not one person either it's a couple guys who are probably between 35 and 45 with some it background but they're not they're not like advanced or anything like that that's who's doing this if i had to guess and i'll tell you why one you know i know mortal Kombat's around now but like at its heyday it was like the the like mid 90s okay so if you've got such a, an affinity for Mortal Kombat, that's how I'm catching the age. I'm, I'm saying the, uh, the, the gender uh, for similar reasons. Also not sophisticated. They're using a malware builder essentially to create the Mortal Kombat malware or ransomware, okay? And they're actively scanning for open remote access points on the internet, which is like, they're walking around the neighborhood looking for unlocked front doors. Okay. So just, just as a, like a quick, like how my mind works with like threat Intel and stuff like that, that that's, that, that was my workflow for this one right here. I mean, it's interesting. Again, I love Mortal Kombat and the Sounders, right? I was there when I was there when Mortal Kombat dropped in the arcade, the original Mortal Kombat. They introduced the block button. That was like a new concept. So, yeah, they're, I mean, they're financially motivated, which makes sense. Um, all I would say is there's no action to take here except uh, things that you should be doing already. You should already be doing um, 
attack surface management, you should, or yeah, attack surface management, you should be scanning your external network interfaces, making sure that you don't have unlocked front doors, remote access going out. You should be educating your end users regularly not to introduce shadow IT. You should have backups and have kind of standard uh, processes in place to handle ransomware incidents. You should not, 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 see this story and be like, holy crap, I better start doing something about this. Like this, this is just, a, you know, this is just another iteration of ransomware and threat active behavior. There's nothing new here. There's nothing novel. The way that you defend from this is the same way you should be already defending in a defense in depth, people process technology secure methodology. Microsoft delivers 75 count box of patches for Valentine's Day. Oh, hold on one second. February's patch Tuesday. Crap. So they didn't have the blog post out. So I don't, I have to listen to the beginning of the story so that I can then Google the story. Hold on. The little is known about the threat actors. They're scanning for organizations who leave remote desktop protocols exposed to the internet. I like Contra too. Microsoft delivers 75 count box of patches for Valentine's Day. February's patch Tuesday fell on Valentine's Day this year, which saw Microsoft deliver an assortment of 75 security patches, nine of which are rated critical and 66 important. Three of the bugs addressed are under active exploitation, but are not the most severe issues fixed this month, with each rated less than an 8.0 CVSS. Microsoft warned, however, that some WSUS servers running on Windows Server 2016 and 2019 might fail to push Windows 11 version 22H2 patch Tuesday updates. Microsoft is currently working on a fix for the issue. Meanwhile, Adobe has patched practically every product it makes this month, but none of the 28 CVEs it fixed has an active exploit. SAP joined in on the patching love on Tuesday as well, issuing 21 new security notes, the worst of which is a privilege escalation vuln in SAP Start Service with an 8.8 .8 CVSS rating. Also on Tuesday, Intel dropped more than 30 security fixes, while AMD fixed two security issues related to its Epic and Ryzen processors and tools. Yeah, well, casually, Joseph, the way I heard, I thought 3389 also, but they, they kind of said it generic. They're looking for remote access uh, openings. So yeah, I didn't hear remote desktop uh, protocol or RDP or 3389. But any, anyway, it doesn't matter. You shouldn't have, I don't care if it's RDP or if it's team viewer, go anywhere, whatever. Like you shouldn't have... Um, in 2023, frankly, you shouldn't have remote access open to the internet. You should have other solutions like uh, like jump gateways or uh, Citrix interfaces or VPNs at minimum. Okay. Um, basically, Microsoft delivered 75 uh, patches on Patch Tuesday. And then, you know, like a bunch of other vendors had uh, patches also. Guys, this is why vulnerability management's a job. Because every single month, a dump truck backs up to your house and tips over and just dumps a load of patches on your driveway and then drives away. And you can have a choice. You can either stare at the pile, sigh, go inside, get a coffee, and just pretend the pile isn't there. Or you could start shoveling the pile, which is, <laughs> this is going to sound terrible, but like people who haven't been broken yet by vulnerability management, they'll just get in there with a shovel and start shoveling the pile and feel really good about the progress they're making. And then the pile gets to about like a quarter of the height it was. And you feel like you're making uh, accomplishments. And then the dump truck shows up again and dumps a new pile of vulns on, or patches onto your pile. And now it's like five fourths the size of it originally. And you're like, oh man, this is a lot of work. Huh. Better start digging, better start digging, better start digging. And then you get down to like a third of the size of the pile. And there's the dump truck again. And guess what? The dump truck, it, <laughs> it, it's like the Terminator in uh, the Terminator franchise. It doesn't sleep. It doesn't eat. It doesn't care. It's just going to show up every Tuesday, first Tuesday of the month or whatever, patch Tuesday of the month. And it's going to dump new vuln, uh, patches on you. Okay. I'm being, I'm being playful as I tend to be. But my point is. This story, while interesting, 
highlights two things. One, you know, 75, 150, 30, whatever. It's just patches. Patches are coming. The dump truck's coming, right? Exactly gaming with the cat. It can't be reasoned with or bargained with. How about 60 patches this week only? No. How about 60 patches? Microsoft's like, no. Like, I must break him. I know I'm jumping franchises here, but guys, it's it's a fun retro day. Okay. So here's the thing with vulnerability management. It's actually, it needs to be a job. I'm actually thinking about doing an entire practical, uh, like I did the practical GRC course. I'm actually thinking, although don't, don't ask me about this because I have to do other things first. So this would probably be like early 2024. Uh, I want to do a practical vulnerability management analyst class course or whatever, because vulnerability management is hard and it grinds on you too, unless you know how to approach it. Um, like just spoiler, like, you know, like digging that pile. I just kept talking about what you really should do is spread the pile out and find the vol the patches that are either wicked critical or are, um, focused on critical business applications and pick those ones out and fix those. And now like, you know, the pile's there. You're never going to get rid of the pile. That's the first thing you need to understand. You're never going to get rid of the pile. The goal should not be to get to zero because you'll never achieve that goal. The goal should be to reduce risk to your business. Doing right. There's the goal. Do I have a, <laughs> all right. Anyways, um, that's what's up. Oh, uh, Eric's, Already got a vulnerability management masterclass. Very cool, Eric. Um, Eric, yeah, contact me. Maybe we could figure something out, Eric. Instead of me doing it, maybe maybe we could, you know, let, maybe we could figure something out, Eric. That'd be cool. All right, let's keep going. Royal Mail refused to pay absurd Lockbit ransom. Chat logs from ransom negotiations between Lockbit ransomware gang and Royal Mail reveal that the British Postal Service's negotiator refused to meet the $80 million ransom demand. Jesus. The negotiator okay. told Lockbit that they inadvertently attacked Royal Mail International, a small subsidiary of Royal Mail, and, quote, under no circumstances will we pay you the absurd amount of money you have demanded, end quote. Lockbit slightly lowered the ransom demand before negotiations stalled on February 9th. Lockbit claims to have published the stolen data to its leak site, though it cannot yet be viewed. Royal Mail said on Tuesday its international services were reinstated for online purchase, but that it is still unable to process some new parcels and large letters. All right, so this is interesting. Um, and Eric Taylor, if you're in chat, Casually Joseph, they they deal with um, ransomware threat actors on the regular. Um, so. This is interesting. So Lockbit is a ransomware as a service model, which means the person that infected Royal Mail may not be like a sophisticated threat actor, right? It could just be an affiliate, someone who, you know, like signed up for the program and downloaded the malware and then sent it to Royal Mail, right? That's how these ransomware as a service models work. Well, the thing is, Royal Mail and Hold on, where is it? Ro where is it? Gosh dang. Royal Mail and Royal Mail International are two different businesses, okay? So the Lockbit threat actor thought they had pay dirt. They said, oh, Royal Mail, which is like, you know, FedEx or DHL, $80 million is only 0.5% of your annual revenue. You could pay $80 million. And Royal Mail International is like, bro, <laughs> you got the wrong company. We're not Royal Mail. We're Royal Mail International. By the way, whoever decided to call themselves Royal Mail International, thinking that they were going to like piggyback on Royal Mail's uh, notoriety, probably regretting that decision. Not that they could have predicted this. But Royal Mail International told them, suck it. We're not going to do anything. Now, I do find it interesting that the Lockbit threat actor uh, was unwilling to budge. They said that they went down a little bit on the ransom, but I'm sure, yeah, they went to 70 million, which obviously Royal Mail International is like, that's, I don't know what annual revenue is for Royal Mail International, but, you know, it'd be like Joel Belton's ice cream shop being called, you know, FedEx ice cream, right? So like Lockpick gets a hold of FedEx ice cream. And they're like, give us $80 million. And Joel's like, dude, I made like, I made you know, eight hundred thousand dollars last year in ice cream scoops. Like, I can't, I can't give you eighty million dollars. 
Like the name is just FedEx ice cream. We're not FedEx. And they're like, ha, 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 ha. 70 million. <laughs> it's like, all right, just, I guess, publish the information. We've already started rebuilding. You suck. We'll see you later. So tough break for Royal Mail International. Um, and, you know, I, I guess to me, it almost, it almost points out, it almost points out like some of the shortcomings of dealing with ransomware as a service affiliates. Like if you were a real sophisticated threat actor, you would have done the due diligence A, to figure out who your actual victim was before you even gave the ransom. But if you had done the ransom and understood that this was not Royal Mail, but Royal Mail International, I feel like a real professional criminal would have adjusted the ransom because they want to get paid, right? It's not about burning down Royal Mail. It's about getting paid, right, Kimberly? Straight cash, homie. Yeah. Google launches first Android beta for ad tracking overhaul. Google says the first beta for Privacy Sandbox on Android started rolling out on Tuesday to a limited number of Android 13 devices. The Privacy Sandbox on Android is a set of tools that aim to create a new standard for how advertisers and websites access information about customers without compromising user privacy. Google says the Android Privacy Sandbox has similar privacy goals as its web sandbox, but that the two features are based on separate technology. What? And that does it for today's cyber. Hold on, I'm, I'm confused a bit about this. Let me do this really quickly. Still confused. Like I get, like I get that Android's offering some type of like privacy thing, which by the way, I mean, Android has a huge market share internationally on mobile devices, um, but Apple has made a, a push to really, really market that they're into privacy and they're into protecting people's privacy. So I appreciate Google trying to also move move the needle on privacy for Android devices. Um, oh yeah, you can see they actually, they actually talk about Apple's app tracking transparency feature here. So... This is like, you know, it's like the cola wars between Coke and Pepsi in the 90s. It's like Google Android versus iOS, right? So they're, they're constantly trying to match features and functionality. So there isn't really a key differentiator um, that, that you can hang your hat on. Um, I, I guess I just don't understand. Privacy Sandbox is a set of tools that aim to create a new standard for how advertisers and websites access information. Okay, so it sounds like the, the Android website is basically an interface between you and your and your behaviors on your device and advertisers and websites pulling data from you okay so it's 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 an extra layer so to me honestly the term sandbox is kind of misleading you're not in a box it's like they're just introducing it's like having a, a like a ham sandwich right and you're the you're the pickle on the bottom and the ham is like the website and stuff and the advertisers and it's good ham it's like virginia baked ham honey of a ham it's the good stuff three four five slices on there it's a fat it's fat ham lots of advertisers pushing good stuff the privacy sandbox is basically a slice of monster cheese that they just jam in between there it's a little bit more of a layer between the pickles you and the ham the advertisers it's a silly, silly example, but I think that's how I'm understanding it versus a sandbox. Because a sandbox, like, you'd be in the sandbox with them, right? Nah. Joel Belton, why? No one asked about sour cream. No one. No one asked about sour cream. Yes. All right, so anyways, if you're an Android user, you should see this as a win to get uh, more privacy. Um, I, I'm... I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you know, an Apple, I'm an Apple iOS guy. I wish, I tell you what, man, I wish Apple computers were strong enough to run like equipment. Like I need to use for simply cyber because I like having the Apple ecosystem. I'm okay with it. Plug me into the matrix, but unfortunately I need this freaking tank of a computer over here to run all the technologies that I need to run for the stream. So Apple, not so much. But anyways, yeah, check it out, guys. If you're a privacy person you sh or, you know, you're interested in protecting yourself a little bit, go ahead and uh, get access to this beta and give it a shot. All right, let's do this. 
that's going to do it for the stream today. Uh, we're about four minutes over at 849, so apologies to Base Case and the whole NCC group. I do try to make it 45 minutes for you all. You can use Apple, but you can't run a mini to do it. Oh, yeah. Er yeah, but the thing is, I don't want to spend like $5,000 on a computer um, just to run the streams. All right, guys, if you were here just for the news, thank you very much. Please join us tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern for the next Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. If you have time um, at 9 a.m., so in 10 minutes from now, this video will be dropping Accountant to Cyber. We're going to be talking to um, Heath Adams, um, educator, pen tester, Lamborghini owner. <laughs> There's a link to it in chat. Come hang out. Uh, I'll be in chat with uh, with you. Uh, but if you got to go, I understand. Thank you very much for hanging out. I am going to do some jaw jacking for the next seven or eight minutes and then hop over on the live stream. Let's see. Kobe Jordan says, I'm just starting in cyber. I'll follow you every day. Oh, yeah. Well, welcome. First of all, welcome, Kobe Jordan. Can I do a wave emote? Yeah, there we go. And let's do Kobe. All right, so everybody, welcome Kobe Jordan. When is Cody on? Okay, so check it out. Um, Cody Kinsey was supposed to be on tomorrow, okay? And uh, s something came up. I, mean, I don't want to get into what came up. Nothing nothing bad. There's no b bad blood, nothing like that. And we just had to push. So Heath Adams uh, was going to be on next thursday the 23rd to talk about tcm's career services it's like a whole thing that they just launched well because cody had to push a week i i reached out to heath and said hey can we switch uh you to tomorrow and he said I, I can't i've got a conflict but zach hill who's like you know connected to heath's hip uh it was like a group chat with the three of us and uh, and, and zach's like oh i could do it and you know i love zach and Zach's definitely equipped to, to have the conversation about what they're doing with the career services. So that's a long way to say Cody will be on on Thursday the 23rd. Zach Hill will be on tomorrow. Gregory Jones, good morning to you, buddy. You should be excited, Kobe. It's a good time. I love cybersecurity. What's on ThreatGen today? Um, so, Richard, I only do the ThreatGen streams every other week now. Uh, but let's pull it up. Let's pull it up. We'll see what Clint's up to. Ooh. Looks like they're doing become a cybersecurity superhuman using AI. Shall we play a game? He had a lot of success with part one of this series. So it looks like Clint's doing part two. So definitely check it out. I love this artwork too. Very nice thumbnail. Very nice thumbnail. Were you able to make Worldwide Wednesday today? No, internal stranger. And I'm not holding you. I'm not holding you accountable. But we did get everything except uh, Australia, and New Zealand, my friend. So we almost got it. We almost got it. It's good to see you, internal stranger. Hope you're well. Are you still a Dragon Ball fan? Do you watch Dragon Ball Super? So gaming with a cat? No. Um. I'm not I'm not opposed to Dragon Ball. I, I was I think I was like too old like Dragon. I never watched Dragon Ball Z like ever. The only reason I even mentioned Dragon Ball recently was because I play Fortnite with my children or I think Fortnite you can't be under 13 to play it. So allegedly I play Fortnite with my children and they had a Dragon Ball Z um, collaboration. So so that's where I was talking about that. I, I'm not familiar with that. NIST 2.0 webinar is happening. That sounds cool. I love me some NIST. What if two AIs pitted against each other on red versus blue? Yep. I think they are doing stuff like that. Goku. Oh, hey, it's no problem, Internal Stranger. We'll be here next week as well. You know what? Just because Internal Stranger is a regular, we'll go ahead. We, we won't take credit for it, but we will, we will click on Australia and light it up. Um for internal stranger. All right, Io, you have a great day too. Stay secure, man.
Yeah, I know. I never watched Dragon Ball Z. Guys, I'm 43. Bro, like, I came up, I played Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter on Super Nintendo, Super Mario Brothers on old 8-bit Nintendo. The shows I watched was, like, Hanna-Barbera. Like, you know, th those type of shows. I loved Thundercats, G.I. Joe. I have an older brother, so, you know, I was not forced to, but, like, inevitably, I would end up watching, like, what my older brother was watching, right? I'm not a boomer. Get out of here, Eric Taylor. <laughs> Some good fans in here. I was pretty into it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, uh, hey, if, if Simply Cyber Community wants it, I'll create a Dragon Ball Z um, channel on the Discord server, and you guys can Dragon Ball Z 9,000 your faces off. Let's see. We came up on some cartoons and games, bruh. Yeah, exactly. I, you know what I watched a lot of, too? Saved by the Bell. I grew up on Saved by the Bell. Yeah, Duck Hunt and Zelda was good. I had the Atari 2600 too, where you'd like plug it into the into the TV. And like the TVs, I didn't even have a remote. You had like a turn dial thing and rabbit ears. Yeah, Thundercats. Oh, and then like the obscure, like obviously Transformers. And then you had like knockoff Transformers, GoBots. Um, and then there was a whole slew of shows of that of that G.I. Joe cartoon style era where it was like, do you remember the guys who like, there was like a green guy, a blue guy, and a red guy, and like, they'd have like a suit, and then you could, their suit would like, weapons would like attach to the suit. That was one. And then, um, there was another one where there was like, um, like, they were like, kind of like Thundercats, but they were like space, and they, they flew like, they had like metal, like metal kind of, and like, one guy had a guitar. Like, I think he was like the, he had a cowboy hat and a guitar, and he would he would fly the plane. I don't remember. Oh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? When it was original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, not whatever this retread is that they got going on now. Thank you, Lucy Samuel. Appreciate it. Silverhawks. Yes, that's it right there. Oh, yeah, Gem. I watched Gem. I wasn't opposed to Gem. Um... Gem was basically like, um, it was like targeting f females. It was like G.I. Joe targeting females, kind of, right? I mean, it wasn't G.I. Joe. Bucky O'Hare. Oh, my God. You guys are taking me back. Holy crap. Right? And then there was, what else was there? I mean, hold on. This is fun. I haven't thought about this stuff in a while. Uh, classic cartoons of the 80s. Let's see what we got. Um, ooh, He-Man. I forgot about He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. There was also, um, do you guys remember, um, uh, Gummy Bears? I mean, that was when I was really young, but Gummy Bears was always good. Voltron? Ooh, Voltron was sick, guys. Oh my gosh. Mask? I feel like Mask was like a second tier show, right? Oh, chat's exploding. We need a new team hybrid for those who are late and will watch the replay. Team hybrid. Okay. Yeah, I, I can do that, um, internal stranger. So we've got team live, team replay, team lurker, a.k.a. team passive observer, and team hybrid. Okay. There are a lot of people who join late and then catch up. All right, Harish, be good. How are we doing on this? This is going to be premiering very soon. Inspector Gadget. That was another one. You guys remember that? Gregory Jones asks, what's my opinion on hackback and companies? So hackback, um, I don't think it's a good idea. Like, dude, the companies don't have staff that are equipped to be able to properly defend themselves. You're really going to like expect them to hack back on sophisticated threat actors. I could see a niche service where, you know, someone like, oh, like instead of a pen testing company, we're like a hackback company. But what, what's the point, right? So, like, Gregory Jones, like, you, me, and uh, Joel Belton's ice cream shop gets hit. And he's like, I'm pissed. I want to hack back. So he hires us for 15 grand for a week's worth of work to hack back. What is the return on the investment for Joel Belton's ice cream shop? Re like, redemption? Feeling better? Sticking it to the, to the attacker? Like, what's the... Th there's no market there. 
Because it doesn't make any sense. Plus, it's like... I don't know, it's weird. It's like authorizing illegal behavior. I mean, if that's the case, you don't even know if you're going to hack back. You don't even know if you're hacking the right people, if you even know what you're doing, right? You don't even know what you're doing. So you could hack the wrong person. Now you're committing a, a, now you're committing a, a felony of your own. All right. I'm going to stop the music. Actually, you guys can't hear my screen, so I'm going to keep playing music. But we are we are just a couple minutes away from the premiere here. I hope you can join us in chat. I will be dropping the show and boogieing over there. Guys, thank you all so very much again. Please join us over on the live. There's 129 of us in chat right now. I'm going to share this in link. Come join us in the chat over there. If you can't make it, that's fine. We'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern for the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. Thank you all very much. Until next time, stay secure.